I previously called Air Canada the best North American carrier for long-haul flights, but that was on a flight to Shanghai. Are the European flights any different? Let's find out on a flight from Munich to Toronto in Air Canada's signature class. Alors, parce que j'ai déjà fait une critique en anglais, par le loi 101, il faut que je fasse ce commentaire en français. Non? Hello? Let's speak American. But in all seriousness, I went into great detail about the seat, entertainment, and service in my first video. So be sure to check that out. Here, I'll just focus on what was different on this European service. As I had a very short connection, I was fortunate that there was a Lufthansa lounge directly across from my gate. Lufthansa has three tiers of lounge. First, Senator, and Business. My Business Class boarding pass allowed me into the Business Class Lounge, but I've already reviewed that. However, holders of the American Express Platinum Card can effectively move up a tier of lounge. If you're traveling in economy, you can access the Business Class Lounge. Or, if you're in business, you can enter the Senator Lounge. Officially, it's only if you're flying on airlines in the Lufthansa Group. But, for some reason, my Air Canada boarding pass worked just fine. So. Was the Senator Lounge significantly better than the Business Class Lounge? Eh, I could hardly tell the difference. There were lockers for your luggage, and your standard beer and pretzel. Though, I must say the sausage soup was really good. There was a hazelnut mousse and other desserts that weren't bad either. There's ample seating, but the lounge was fairly crowded prior to emptying out. So yeah, it's a fine lounge. Just really nothing to get excited about. But that's only fitting, as that sums up my overall thoughts on Lufthansa. As my flight was delayed, the lounge staff looked into rebooking me. But the direct Munich-Chicago flight was severely overbooked, and I prefer Air Canada to Lufthansa anyway. Finally, it was time to board the 777-300ER. While I previously had been in the rear of the mini cabin on the right, Today, I was towards the front of the main cabin on the left. Variety is the spice of life. Things got off to an auspicious start when I overheard the crew discussing an entertainment failure impacting the rear business class cabin, though the issue was ultimately fixed. My seat wasn't really properly made up, and there were wine stains near the TV. As I previously mentioned, I really like these seats. Storage includes a compartment near the aisle, in the footwell, and a compartment with a TV remote. The tray is large and versatile, and one of my favorites for productivity. The crew announced that they spoke English, French, German, Italian, and Portuguese, and service began with champagne. We pushed back past a Lufthansa A350 and began to taxi out. Air Canada shows advertisements after the safety video. Really? After takeoff, we received a hot towel, which I proceeded to use to clean up the wine stain. Last time, I had ordered the signature cocktail, and the flight attendant had kvetched that she didn't want to make it. This time, the cabin manager named Heidi made it with a smile. I need to stop here for a moment to highlight something. Heidi singularly made this flight great. The rest of the cabin crew kept their heads down, were curt, and provided a completely forgettable experience. I don't even remember their names, since they never introduced themselves. For example, when taking lunch orders, I was greeted with a, what do you want? Are we sure I wasn't flying American or United? Damn! But Heidi introduced herself to each passenger, continually asked us if we needed anything, and personally thanked each of us by name at the end of the flight. I know it's really minor, but it truly makes a difference. There were no David Hawksworth signature dishes on the menu, only Air Canada and Nutra Cuisine meals. I don't want to be reminded to be healthy while traveling. There was no Dine on Demand menu either, though you can have the main meal or second meal served whenever you like. There were four options for mains of chicken, beef, fish, and vegetarian pasta. The woman across from me wanted the beef and was told it was out, so she ordered the fish. 
However, Heidi came to tell her that they were now out of the fish, but she'd managed to find a beef lying around. The smoked salmon and halibut were good, though the accompanying barley forgettable. The salad was thoroughly uninspired as well, but all was forgiven with a healthy serving of garlic bread. I ordered the cod, and it was slightly overcooked and pretty bland, but the rice with quinoa and capers was much more flavorful. The carrots were crunchy, and green beans not mushy. Next, a trolley with cheese, fruit, and pork camera. I finished with three flavors of ice cream, tiramisu, chocolate, and pistachio, all of which were good. I mentioned previously that the seat is quite adjustable. What I missed was that you can also change the firmness of the seat, and there is a noticeable difference. I made the bed for sleep, and while there was plenty of legroom and headroom above my head, the mattress pad is still rather thin. In addition, I found that my knees kept hitting the tray. I just wasn't able to comfortably turn over. In hindsight, this wasn't a problem on my Cathay Pacific flight, which has a very similar seat. I slept for four and a half hours and awoke just in time for the second meal. It was a plate of ham, sausage, salami, and potato salad. Are we sure I'm not back in Prague right now? The meats were fine and the potato salad nothing special. Heidi came to me to ask if I had a connecting flight and let me know that I had been preemptively rebooked. This was a wonderful, proactive gesture by Air Canada. Unfortunately, it resulted in an ultimate delay of about six and a half hours, but that story is for another video. Headsets were collected 30 minutes prior to landing and locked up in red bags. So it is an Air Canada thing rather than a China thing. We circled Toronto, and came into land. Unfortunately, there was a medical emergency after we touched down. They wouldn't let economy class passengers deplane, but let business class deplane via the front jet bridge. And we still have a medical emergency, so please remain seated. And, uh, a few of you, upon uh, agreement with the uh, flight attendants, are going to be able to leave the aircraft little by little, but at this time we have to leave the left side of the aircraft free for the emergency medical services, so please do not stand up. The captain himself left the cockpit to personally visit the passenger, and I hope everything was alright. So, time for a second conclusion on Air Canada. Again, it's a really solid product. It was unfortunate that I got another lackluster crew, and had it not been for Heidi, I would have thought the flight as only being okay. The food wasn't anything special either. But Air Canada really has a winner with their executive pod seat, and so a lot of things can be average, and the flight still turned out great. As a reminder, I primarily flew Air Canada to avoid fuel surcharges. What transatlantic carrier should I fly next? I'm leaning towards Austrian or Swiss, using Avianca or United Miles to avoid fuel surcharges. Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing for many more videos to come, and I'll see you in the next one.